What is the Steelers' best path toward victory here? Where do they have an advantage, Ron? Uh, maybe coming out of the bye again, this run game, if they get it going and commit to it. Um, you know, they'll have to deal with Aaron Donald. Um, but, I mean, I certainly like Stafford. Gives them an edge over Pickett. I think those receivers are better even than the, the Steelers' receivers. Um, the defense, Steelers' defense going to be able to contain those guys. I have my doubts about that. I would say the Steelers run the ball and, you know, keep keep the – boy geniuses offense off the field the best they can man that would be good i see the steelers path toward victory getting at matthew stafford who's been sacked three four two and six times with that pass rush in it with the right the pass rush sacked the quarterback in the, mean, i'm the, talking about yeah, yeah the steelers you're talking about best way to win right yep 15 times in the past four games he's been sacked some of the matchups seem very advantageous uh is it Alaric Jackson on the left side is not having a good year? I think this could be an Alex Highsmith breakout game. Jackson has allowed a ton of pressures. And it's funny, uh, there's a chart here where it's a it's a graphic where each guy is represented by a dot. Who's having the best pass blocking year of all the tackles in the league and the worst? And Dan way Moore, Dan Moore Jr. the best? No, way up top is Lane Johnson. He's in a class by himself. Tyron Smith and Trent Williams are right behind him, Trent Brown. Then you go to the middle of the league where you find uh, both the Rams guys. Uh, I think it's Havenstein is normally really good. He's going to be going against T.J. Watt. Then you find Jackson, then a few guys below them, a few guys below them, and in a class and a block all by himself, way down at the bottom of this chart, is one Dan Moore Jr. So you're so, saying man, worst in the league. And it's, let's put it this way. The best in the league, Lane Johnson, there are guys right behind him. Then the whole rest of the league. And then Dan Moore, you have to go like way, and way there's down. nobody behind him. No, and there's barely anybody ahead of him. There's a huge space ahead right, of him right. before you get to the rest of the league. So, so unless those guys at PFF are really, really, really wrong, Dan Moore is having at least a bad and maybe a horrendous year, and he might be the worst pass-blocking tackle in all of football. Then why don't we see Broderick Jones? Great question. But to make a long story longer, that's what I see as the Steelers' key to victory. Man, it would be nice to get out to a lead, wouldn't it? Yep. And, and you really your... can pass, run the ball, play action. Yeah. Uh, and keep, keep Boy Genius's offense off the field. 15 sacks in the last four games, Folsey. To me, that's the key. That's yep. their path toward victory is to get after Stafford, shake him up a little bit, maybe knock him out of the game, things like that. That's their path toward victory. It's a very winnable game, but it's also a dangerous game. That's why the Rams are favored. They're dangerous. They got weapons. They still have Aaron Donald. Because if they don't get after Matt Stafford, then you've got Cooper Cup running wild, you've got Puka Nakua out there, and you've got Patrick Peterson and Levi Wallace on the other side. Because who knows how much Joey Porter Jr. is actually going to play in this game? I, I think, promise I more think of he's them. Gonna, I think he's going to play a lot more. And I don't know who was we'll it. See. Was it Ray? Who was it? Uh, somebody that said, you know, the Rams love to use three wide receivers. Yeah. And if that's the case, Porter's going to be out there. You know, question if it's, if it's is, a who two does he match off, up on? Two, two wide receivers. You know, maybe not, but I think he's gonna. I'll bet, I'll bet he plays as much as Pat Pete and Wallace this week. I bet their snaps are all comparable. Pat Pete seemed to say that it was gonna be Porter against Puka, and it was gonna be him against Cooper Cup. Not sure I love either that one of those me. matchups. And then Levi Wallace. Well, whoever he's against covering, two -two at, I don't well, love that matchup either. Two two. What do you, you think? You gotta like two two. Yeah. What do you think is their best path toward victory? Yeah, here? I was gonna say that, and coupled with. A at times they've shown this last year and this year a bend but don't break defense. It's give up a lot of yards, but give up more field goals than mm -hmm. touchdowns in the end. Just keep yourself in the game. Yes, keep yourself in the game, and the Steelers tend to win. Find yeah, a way the close in the ones fourth at the quarter. End. And here's another advantage for the Steelers. It should be anyway. Is their receivers against the Rams defensive back? The one guy uh, got in trouble with the law here. Their best player. That leaves Witherspoon as their number one corner. Now, did they rule the guy out, the, the guy that's been charged with the felony? I don't know if they ruled him out yet. I don't. I, I have not seen one thing or another. I just saw he was a – what, do you have a weapon? 
Not sure of the details of the story. Arrested early Monday morning on a felony charge of carrying a concealed weapon. He did return to practice, apparently, yesterday. I, I, so maybe I, he will play. I, I think the last I read about it, Sean McVay at his press dealing on Tuesday said uh, he was still gathering facts. That's always the coaches. Yeah. We're still gathering facts. I don't want to say anything about it. Now, so that we'll was see. earlier in the week. I've not seen if he's spoken about it since. Yeah, uh, as of yesterday anyway. Uh, he was headed in a positive direction as far as playing goes, but was still up in the air here. So we'll see. Either way, I think that Pickens and Deontay will have an advantage here. And I think that could be exploited, but you better have a quarterback who can throw accurately yeah. and have time to do so and do it within a scheme that makes sense. Still wish Fryermuth was playing, though. I mean, at this point, I don't have any confidence in exploiting any kind of secondary with this offense. I just don't. I just don't have confidence that they can do that man is that a sad statement isn't it yep you're going into a game and you have to say to yourself yeah we really can't exploit their pass defense because because why because we're not any good yeah <laughs> <laughs> and yet they're finding ways to win games here they're as long if they don't get blown out i kind of like them in a close game yeah those are the kinds they yeah, like or, and win. Or the, the, the Maddie says bend and break defense. Are they going to be able to make a splash play or two? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, will somebody get an interception? Will Highsmith or Watt force a sack? Uh, not a force a sack, force a fumble. Um, that's what I think the defense has to do for them to win. That's we saw that in their two of their three wins. I feel like this. There's two very likely outcomes. It's either a 34 to 17 blowout loss to the Rams, or it's like a, you know, a typical 20 to 16 win for the Steelers. I agree with that. I think if there's a blowout, it'll be the Rams doing the blowing out, but I kind of like the Steelers chances if it comes down to the end. What do you think the crowd will be like, Ron? 50-50 or so? I don't know. There? I haven't been following. Uh, the Rams do better than the Chargers, don't they? Yeah, In but neither stadium? one of them do very well, I don't think. It can't be as bad as Vegas. It just can't. I saw earlier this year, and, and the 49ers embarrassed uh, Akershire Show, Stadium. Don't you, but... you have a site that tells you the percentages? That, uh... Yeah, I can't remember now what that remember site was, Remember you had it before? Yeah. Uh, I, I would bet it's going to be around 50-50. It might be. That's a, 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 you know, obviously Vegas is the number one attraction. L.A. would be number two. My friend Jimmy O, Jimmy Astronic and his son's. Left this morning. They're going to L.A. Go. L.A. is more attractive than any other place they play other than Vegas. I'm going to say more Steeler fans. I think this is probably a nice little trip for people. Plus, I think there's people out there who will go to yeah. the game. Yeah. I'm just trying to see um, visiting fans at Rams games, whether they, they – nobody's as bad as the Chargers when it comes to that, yeah, are they? I think the Rams – Nobody in the whole league. Rams are better with their home crowd than the Chargers are. I mean, that is that situation is just sad. They should go back to San Diego, yeah, shouldn't know. they? Yes. I would think so. Now, the 49ers, it says, took over so five, but they didn't have far to go. So that was one I've where... never been to so five. I you, think you're you, going to like it. Have you been there? No. You were at the high school stadium. Yeah, that was the high school soccer stadium they played in a few years ago. That was the game of Duck. Devin Duck. Bush had a great game that night. Eagles fans, take over SoFi Stadium. There you go, Ron. Which is. Against the Rams? Yep. Or Chargers? Against the Rams. Eagles Nation showed out in L.A. on Sunday, 23-14 over the Rams. I'm looking at photos. It's all kinds of Eagles fans. There's going to be more than 50% Steeler fans. If they can do it, Steeler fans will do it better. Well, then they're not going to be in a hostile environment, as they love to say.